Diagnosis and Testing of HIV Infection Anyone can be infected with HIV, regardless of age, gender, or lifestyle. However, some individuals may be at greater risk of infection and should be tested for HIV, including anyone who has used or shared needles for injecting drugs, such as heroin, anyone who has been diagnosed with or treated for illnesses such as hepatitis, tuberculosis or TB, or a sexually transmitted disease or STD, anyone who has had unprotected sex, this includes cases where condom usage failed due to breaking or falling off. Testing should also be performed if unprotected sex has occurred with someone who meets any of the above criteria. HIV cannot be diagnosed through symptoms, since symptoms may be related to other illnesses. The only way to know if you have HIV is to take an HIV test. To diagnose whether you have been infected with HIV, a blood sample will have to be taken for testing. Tests performed on your blood sample will look for the virus itself or specific markers called antibodies that indicate that the virus is present. Antibodies are special proteins produced by the body's immune system to fight infection when HIV enters the body. If a person has HIV-specific antibodies in their blood, it means they have been infected with HIV. Antibodies are the body's defense against infection. However, in the case of HIV infection, the HIV virus is very tricky and can easily change its form or mutate, evading the body's antibody defense. With the ability to avoid the body's immune system, the HIV virus can keep replicating, resulting in an infection that is chronic and long-term. From the time you are first infected with the virus, your body normally takes a few weeks to produce antibodies against HIV. These HIV antibodies can be found in various body fluids, such as blood, urine, and saliva. An antibody test is the most common type of test used to diagnose HIV. Antibody tests look for HIV antibodies in blood, urine, or saliva. If antibodies to HIV are detected, it means you have been infected with HIV. Antibody testing is a two-step process. First, an initial screening test is performed, called an enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, or ELISA antibody test. And second, a follow-up test is performed, known as a Western blot test. Recent advances in research have noticeably cut the waiting time needed to return ELISA results to your doctor. Older tests used to take days or weeks, but newer procedures can now be done in 20 minutes. Any ELISA result indicating that you are positive for HIV will then need to be cross-checked against a Western blot test in order to confirm the findings of the ELISA test. Results from a Western blot test are normally available in a week. While the ELISA test is very sensitive for detecting HIV antibodies, on occasion it can lead to the wrong diagnosis. For cases where the ELISA test concludes that you are HIV positive when you actually are not, this is called a false positive test result. Therefore, to double-check the accuracy of an ELISA test that concludes you are HIV positive, another sample will be tested using the Western Block procedure. If both the ELISA and Western Block antibody tests return HIV positive results, then a diagnosis of HIV infection will be confirmed and given. When HIV antibody testing fails to detect actual HIV infection, this is called a false negative result. This means the test is negative, even though a person is infected with HIV. A false negative result typically gets recorded during the so-called window period following potential exposure to HIV infection. The window period, usually weeks to months, is the time it takes from the first point of infection for enough HIV antibodies to be produced at levels that are detectable within the blood. If your results return negative, but you are considered to be at a high risk of infection, or if you are within the window period, you should return to your local clinic or hospital in another three months and repeat testing. Other reasons for false negative results may include an abnormal immune response, a condition known as a gamma globulinemia, 
infection with the type N or type O strain of HIV, and technical or clerical errors. In the case of infants born to mothers with HIV, the virus can be transmitted from mother to child during pregnancy, labor and delivery, and from breastfeeding. All babies born to mothers with HIV are therefore born with HIV antibodies, though not necessarily HIV itself. Infants born under these circumstances should be tested for HIV infection. You should speak to your doctor if you are worried that your baby might be infected.